Hello there guys, welcome to Yo Sakura. In this compositing video, I'm going to redo the same composite that we did in the previous one, but it's going to be more streamlined. We're going to use a lot less number of nodes, plus it's a bit more advanced than the last one. The reason I'm doing this video is because the Nuke has a lot of benefits when you use it, right? So the main benefit, as I mentioned from the beginning, is its ability to work with channels. So we're going to use the full capabilities of the merge node and other nodes to utilize these channels instead of having to shuffle copy them each and every time. So for that reason uh, I'm just recreating the same video but this time it's going to be much more uh, compact and uh, hopefully easy to understand since you're followed in from the last video. So let's just get started. So inside Nuke let me start by opening up the same image we had in the previous one. So we had a spear EXR file and uh, while creating the composite the last time what we first did is uh, take the two diffuse channels which we had in this file namely the spear key diffuse and then we had the spear fill diffuse and we basically screened them together and once we did that we multiplied it with the color channel and after that we just added all the passes which made it dark so that would be the ambient occlusion and shadows then we added the passes which made it lighter so that will be the indirect and the reflection pass and the specular so we are going to follow the same method this time but uh, we are not going to use all those shuffle copies so uh, let me just keep this note at the top I'm just going to create one breakpoint here because uh, it's I'll sh you'll understand why exactly this is later on but right now let it just be there now to begin with first step the only step only step in which you are going to use shuffle copy is to create a complete plain background set or a plain background slate from which you can work with now by default if I go to RGBA and come back to the EXR file you can see that there is some RGB information but this is a composited RGB it doesn't actually have uh, what I am looking for right so uh, what I want to do is uh, go ahead and create a plain slate where I have a default RGB which I can start working with. So instead of having to go ahead and t uh, take any unwanted RGB or creating a blank black color RGB using a constant or something as such uh, which I had done in the creating image channels uh, video, I am going to go ahead and convert one of the default first layers of any, uh, my composite which is going to be the key diffuse into the RGB pass itself. So this is the only step where I am using a shuffle node. So I have added in the shuffle. Uh, let me just connect that. So this is going to be the only shuffle node in the entire tree uh, most probably which I'll ever be using and this is the one which is going to give me a blank slate to work with. So I'm going to choose this to be my key diffuse and the all of my diffuse values just come in and I want it to give me just RGB values and no alpha channel coming out of it. So just RGB and this is going to be my spear diffuse. So this is what I have. Now I'm just going to rename this to my so this is my key, key lights diffuse channel so this is done so now we can start compositing this so I'm going to take my merge node and this merge node this is of course the background and my foreground is going to come directly from here now uh, in the previous video as you had seen what I had done was uh, put in a shuffle copy node which comes in here convert the diffuse fill into something uh, like RGB and then gets merged over but this time I'm following a complete different route so what I'll do here is I'll just come down to the merge and uh, my B channel is giving me RGB information which is default whereas my A channel is giving me RGB from here whereas what I actually want from here is the diffuse channel but from the fill light so I'll come back to my merge node here and from the A channel I'm just going to choose spear fill diffuse and immediately you can see some results what happened here let's just I'll just uh, do this briefly so from this node here on the top I'm getting all the channels into this one and as soon as it comes here it's getting differentiated or it's bifurcating and as soon as it gets in here the channels which was actually the key diffuse gets converted to RGBA and the RGB channel which actually existed is no longer exists it's been removed and then it's passed down so basically this 
whatever this is passing through is nothing but the diffuse key and then the actual path over here is still giving me the straight line from there nothing has been altered and that is getting in but I don't want to use the straight unaltered RGB from here what I actually want to use is the spears fill diffuse so that's why I've chosen only the A channel to be spear fill diffuse whereas B channel is left to RGBA so it immediately gives me this output but whereas I've already shown you in the previous video just for now uh, uh, having a proper workflow just let's just convert this to screen and continue on from here and one thing to note I can actually go ahead and change this mix amount to get any amount of uh, uh, the fill fill diffuse which I have in this output now the reason that I've actually added this diffuse key here on the top rather than actually selecting the diffuse key here itself is because if I do that let me just disable this if I do that then if I'm trying to let's say use this mix amount it's going to default back to the RGB and you can see that I'm getting the final composite here so I don't want this to happen this is only to avoid this from happening I'm going to go ahead and create this shuffle copy node which is giving me a blank canvas so let's continue on from here it's uh, completely the same as we did in the last uh, session I'm just creating a merge node adding this as a background adding this as a foreground and um, as we had done in the previous one this is going to be my color so let's just come back to this merge node this is going to be my diffuse fill and then this is going to be my color and for color I'm just going to go to the A channel I'm going to choose spear color and once that is done I'm going to choose the operation to be multiply let me just put that into the viewer now so as you can see immediately the color has come in and you can see each and every single node here has a specific purpose it's not there uh, simply adding any extra work and previously we just had shuffle copies whereas this node itself is able to do it do the work uh, means uh, taking a specific channel so the shuffle copy was just a burden on the network so we're just streamlining the whole process here this time so color is added in and next after the color I'm just adding the merge node here and the A channel goes in there and after the color is added in I'm going to let's say add in the ambient occlusion so a channel goes into spear ambient occlusion I'm going to multiply it over so as you can see here ambient occlusion has come in so that is added now as you can see this is a very simple network and it's giving us the same result and it's much faster so let me just quickly start finishing this up so ambient occlusion is done so what else needs to be okay so actually uh, right now I don't really need this merge node uh, what I need to do is add in the shadows so as I did in the previous video I can use a grade node for shadows so I'm just gonna add a grade node to this and for my mask I'm going to connect it to the connected to the original source now what I'm going to do is uh, let, let me just show you what's the result I'll just take the multiply node and take it down completely now what I'll do is under mask instead of having the RGBA alpha I'm going to change this and choose the actual shadow pass so as you can see here I have spear key shadow and it's already in alpha you can't see any RGB channels for it uh, that is the reason I usually take out renders of shadows with just one single alpha so because it's easier to do to work with it over here so as you can see I just chose the alpha and immediately my shadow is applied only in the required position so as simple as that I have my grade added or basically my shadows done so after my one shadow I'll just uh, add in the next one so it goes in there for the mask and here I'll choose the other shadows so my previous one was so this is the reason you see better to actually name your files as you go along this is my this is actually the key so the shadow from the key and this is going to be the shadow from the fill I'll just go choose the fill 
shadow alpha so that is done and all I need to do is take down the multiply I can also actually go ahead and uh, change the color if I wanted to but I really don't have to so that is done as you can see there is difference over there and the shadow is giving that this is the ambient occlusion I have my color my diffuse fill and my original diffuse which doesn't really matter whether it's there right now so I have these things added in uh, so these are all the things which are actually making my composite darker so now it's time to add in everything that makes it lighter so I'll just take in another merge node connect the B pipe there and the foreground here so what I want to first composite on top is the indirect lighting so for that A channel goes into sphere indirect and it's going to be on screen operation and I'll just connect it into the viewer and as you can see immediately it gives you some result and it's also giving you some extra details in the shadow region so that one is done okay so this is my indirect and continuing on I'll take another merge node so my, after my indirect I'm going to add in my refle uh, reflections so under A channels I'm going to come into uh, sphere reflection and I'm going to screen it and display it here and as you can see reflections are added okay so once reflections are done let's add in the speculum as you can see the entire thing looks as if it's a matte object and the reflection looks kind of fake because it's a matte object and reflections on a matte object doesn't really go well so I'm just going to take in another merge node and here I'll just choose the spec and I'm going to screen it on top so as you can see immediately the surface is glossy and I'm getting some results so this is a default composite as of now so let me just see if I've left out any of the passes so I've finished the spec uh, both the shadows both the diffuse reflection indirect color and ambient occlusion yes so this is almost the final composite and as you can see this is very small it's very neat and it doesn't have any kind of additional nodes which are not actually necessary and you can easily see what exactly is happening all the backgrounds are coming in from one side the foregrounds from another side and the masks on the same side so it's easier to understand what's happening so as with the previous video one last thing which is left out here is to actually adjust the edges with the alpha properly so as you have seen here on the edge it is kind of too cut in let me just show you the uh, original and this is the final as you can see the alpha has kind of cut into the entire composite so I don't really want this to happen so I'm going to just take in the uh, actual node itself over here I'm going to apply on pre -mult. so this unpremolt node doesn't ex exactly do much immediately what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide all the channels by the alpha channel to begin with so as you can see it immediately added a lot of this detail additional detail on the edges whereas I don't really need all that extra details so if I could come here somewhere at around 45 degrees you can see the maximum effect so So as you can see it's giving me a lot of detail and I don't really need that much so what I'm going to do next is actually pre multiply the entire output so to pre multiply it all I need to do is come back down to the final I'm just going to add a pre mult here at the bottom so one thing to note here uh, whatever happens this pre mult does not affect alpha so as you can see this pre mult here on the side 
it has all these channels on top of it and then it has this alpha channel at the edge right so let me just show you the difference over here so this is connected to the uh, input one of the viewer and this is on the two so what I'll do is just shuffle between them on the single channel let's say the red channel so here I am on the red channel and this is the uh, original red channel and this is the unpre-multiplied red channel so you can see there is a huge difference between the two and now what I'm going to do is just uh, go to the alpha channel instead and check how different bo those two are so this is the uh, um, original alpha channel and this is the unpre-multiplied alpha channel so as you can see it's exactly the same so unpre-multiply doesn't usually work on the alpha channel by default so that is one huge benefit uh, the reason for that being I can actually use the alpha channel from here into this final composite and as you remember from the previous video this alpha channel which is here on the final output is not really useful as you can see this is the alpha channel in this output and there is actually none so I need an alpha channel here so to add in the alpha channel I'm just going to use a shuffle copy connecting it here and my one channel goes in there so this is uh, copy alpha so uh, from the second channel I'm just taking in the RGB not the RGBA so I'm just taking the RGB and from the original I'm just taking the alpha and the alpha goes into the original alpha so it's very easy to understand as you can see from this complete output which is over here over here I'm just taking the alpha from the uh, input 1 and from the input 2 I'm just taking the RGB so in total I'm getting the RGBA channels so in pre multiply at the end I'm just going to have a simple pre multiplication operation multiplied over RGB with alpha so on the edge as you can see it looks beautiful and if I compare the pre multiplied result with the original the edge is exactly the same of course the composite looks a bit different it's dependent on how exactly it's comp added in together how the passes are used but as you can see the edge is exactly the same and this is what you're always looking for always the edge has to be exact and of course the alpha channel also exists in the end so this is the easiest way of creating a simple composite and as I'd shown you in the previous video I'd done some grading operations and other things so let's just uh, come do that and see the results so to do these grading operations um, I'm just going to take a grade node and put it uh, just before it goes into any of the keys and here I can actually go ahead and take it anyhow I want so let's just see the results here uh, one thing to remember uh, whenever you're adding any nodes over here on the side remember that you are by default grading only the RGB channels which is not uh, exactly what you will be compositing so for this purposes you will have to ch change this to all so that you're exactly working on all the channels or let's say over here I know that I'm working with the diffuse key so for that purpose just to make sure nuke is not doing extra work I can just go to diffuse key so only the diffuse key is being affected and as you can see only the channels which are being affected are shown here at the bottom so it's affecting only that and by changing this I'm affecting only the diffuse key and once I've affected it a little bit I can come out to the final output and as you can see I have a lot of more lot more detail than I had before so if I just uh, disable and enable this node you can see it's adding a lot of detail even here on the top all the detail which is lost has come back so uh, that is one thing to note and also just like uh, how I color corrected things just before adding it in before so I have the color being added here so all I need to do is take a grade and add it just before the color operation I'll just set it to all so that it's affecting each and every output and then I can actually go ahead and clamp down the gamma so that I'm seeing more of the color just increasing the contrast so I'm getting more of this color and then probably I can lift it up just to bring back a little bit of that uh, brightness so as you can see I can still work with all the channels the same exact way I can do 
all the operations but whatever I have done here in this entire uh, setup is the least number of nodes that I require to get this final output. I have not added anything extra, I have not removed anything essential, I have done the complete composite with the bare minimum. Of course you can get rid of all these uh, uh, helpers but uh, this is much more organized so I'd like to keep them. So this is a simple composite. Now after uh, everything is done, uh, just before I pre-multiply it, my default thing is I usually add a grade node at the bottom and I make sure I grade it so that I have a perfect black and white output, especially if I'm working with float points. So if I turn on my zebra stripes here, uh, sorry, I like to call them zebra stripes, it's just out of gamut warning. So as you can see here, I have things which are out of gamut so I can clamp out the whites and have the final output uh, but just remember if you're going to do any kind of color corrections especially apply things like motion blur after doing this then your output would not look be the best. Uh, the reason for that being uh, when you are applying any kind of blur or most of the color correction operations it's actually using the float point values instead if you're just going to clamp it out then all the values are being neglected so it's not going to give you all the best details it's not going to give you that sharp highlights so make sure you do this clamping only when you are certain that uh, you don't need any other extra outputs so uh, I'm just going to go about uh, to the maximum clamp here and uh, black is clamped I'm just going to remove that and start seeing exactly how much I can clamp it of course there is no rule that you should not clamp your values you can definitely clamp them but just it's uh, better not to have a too much of a clamping taking it below so of course this is completely the specular I don't need to clamp that so this is a composite I have I can actually add in some color corrections on top of it I can go ahead do any kind of tweaks I want on top of it so let's say I wanted it brighter but I wanted let's say the white point to be lower so I can do all kinds of edits uh, just to make sure that it looks good in the end so just remember whatever uh, things you follow make sure in the end the output looks good that's all is required so for now in this video all I wanted to show you was how exactly this output can be created using the bare minimum number of nodes and um, uh, as you have seen in the previous uh, video the output is pretty much the same the uh, the reason I'm creating it as such uh, is because uh, later on I'll be showing you how exactly you can create some VFX composites and I'll be using I'll be creating composites pretty much as such uh, the reason being uh, I want the composite to be as streamlined as possible I don't like clutter and I w want it to be easily be uh, easily read I don't want anyone to be confused as soon as they go through the node structure so this is the main reason I wanted to create this video and I really hope you understood this one if you have not please uh, put in uh, put in your doubts in the comments on the video or you can come on to the website itself which is completely ready and functioning I have set up a forum too where you can post in your doubts and given any kind of suggestions which you have so for now I really hope you understood this and um, well I'll see you in the next video and thank you for watching this goodbye